That's what I don't understand. She, she's so ordinary. She's wonderful. No, she's wonderful. And she's ordinary, but I love her for that. I just... How did she stay invisible from a god? She defeated Zutek. She was important. Because we think she's important. Sack Russell T. Davis. Sack Jane Tranter. Sack Phil Collinson. Sack Julie Gardner. Emotip. Emotip. Well, something along those lines. I don't know. Hey guys, welcome back to the Bucket Think Tank. So yeah, Empire of Death. You know, this is a weird episode because I could swear, I could swear we were building up to something interesting with the reveal of Ruby's parents. And were these all red herrings? No, I wouldn't say the red herrings because red herrings are usually investigated. Um, there's nothing else out there for us to investigate other than a straight line. But you know what? We are getting out of out of sync here. So anyway, Sutek, it turns out, has been playing the long game harder than anybody, and he ultimately kind of deserved to win. So apparently, in Pyramids of Mars, when, you know, the fourth Doctor got Sutek into the Vortex to die, um, he latched on to the TARDIS, and this whole time, he's been there. Just like right there. All right. Uh, manipulating the perception filter of the TARDIS. Apparently, it's 73 yards. What does that mean? We don't know yet. So it doesn't matter. And this whole time, he's been here, studying the TARDIS, holding on to the TARDIS. Um, which is weird, because when, you know, the 15th Doctor took the hammer and hit the TARDIS, put it into two, what was he just like, was there two Sutex? And, or did he just go like, oh, wrong one. It just jumped onto the other one? Like, what? Like, so anyway, so Sutek has been, while studying the TARDIS, found a name for a plan, for a brilliant trap for the Doctor. Susan. Which is fair. That's what got me excited about this whole thing, that Susan might be here. Turns out she's not. But he created um, this Susan um, now for, with from the technology S Triad Susan Triad, and so each time she showed up, on, each time the Doctor landed on a planet, that persona was created and grew stronger and stronger. And since the Doctor kept coming back to Earth so much, it just got it got stronger there too. So effectively, Sutek has used the Doctor's love of travel and his timeline to place agents all over time and space. This is sort of what leads to the idea of not just the planet's dying, but even the memory of it's dying. All right, why that woman uh, that the Doctor meets for the spoon, which was weird. What if she didn't have a spoon? Because um, he needed a spoon, actually. Um, she can't remember that, you know, her her baby is dead, which was a very just shocking moment. I'm like, that, that kid's dead, isn't it? Yeah. But at the same time, um, the problem is, like, the stakes got too high. The deaths got too high. I'm like, they're coming back. They're coming back. Like, certain once you kill certain characters, you just sort of know, this is all going to be undone. This is all going to be undone. Uh, Should have been the kid. Should have been... Why can I not remember his name? Should have been the kid. Well, I knew Kate wasn't going anywhere. I knew Rose wasn't going anywhere. So all that was left was the soldier that we didn't know. And, um... Uh, the, the scientific advisor. So, yeah, that was kind of it. The Doctor's emotional outburst would have been better had he not been crying as much. I know this has been a critique of this Doctor for a while. That I think they should have been better planned out. Like imagine if instead of uh, all this sort of crying, we see a very stoic and controlled person slowly start to break down. With the idea being that he is open, he is in touch with his emotions, but as everything sort of gets harder and harder, it's harder for him to focus. And the idea that here that Sutek has used the Doctor's own life as a weapon, effectively. Hey, everywhere you've been, every time you just went somewhere to have fun, yeah, you were setting them all up to die. I think 
would be a great way to have this finally break down, and even more so with the idea that Mel is there too. Have a sort of classic companion and a new companion sort of see this doctor sort of hit his emotional low, then build him back up. I think that would have been a bit more interesting. Uh, but you know, hindsight's 50 50. If anything, um, I really felt Sutek deserved the win here. This did feel like Russell was trying to take um, John Sims' master and the whole Harold Saxon thing and amp it up. Because then we out of the whole Harold Saxon thing, uh, the the 10th Doctor really sort of realized that, you know, by deposing Harriet Jones, he opened the gateway for Harold Saxon. But at the same time, I'm still thinking that, you know, it wouldn't have been hard for the Master to take that position from Harriet Jones. But, you know, whatever. Um, the Doctor never sort of addresses that, oh, this is effectively my fault. Uh, but, of course, you know, the 10th Doctor taking responsibility on that level is just not him anyway. I think the biggest problem is that Sutek really played this game better than anybody, and his loss just felt kind of... And he come back like, hey, it happened, he lost, and we went from there. And I think it's because, like, the logic is, something about Ruby confuses him, shocks him and everything. So he's like, okay, I can't kill the Doctor yet, because I can't, don't know what's up with Ruby and her mom. I'm like, why do you care? Alright, I... So, this logic has to be that he also watched the Maestro tie to destroy Ruby 2, and it turns out there's like a song buried inside of Ruby that he can't get to. Well, the, the Maestro can't get to. So, I don't quite get that logic there either. I'm like, okay, so... Okay, what... what so, what, what, what was that? Um, it doesn't quite make much sense. But, to undo all the damage that Sutek has done... Uh, we see this... Is this the string? Is this the string? It's some... Oh, no, that's just Mel's ribbon. Uh, what? Mel's ribbon was blue. Whatever. So, anyway. We... <laughs> Ruby baits the... D baits Sutek out with, Hey, this is my mother's name. Breaks it. Then a rope goes onto his neck. And they drag Sutek through the vortex. As his claws just sort of tear it open. Spreading his death. And apparently, death times death equals life. All right, and like Sutek, you call yourself death. Well, I am life. I'm like, wait, since when? When when are you life? All right, like none of that makes sense. But I guess whatever. And the reason I accept this is because if the death times death brings life through all of time and space, then that means that means Gallifrey could be back. And I am a proud Gallifreyan patriot. This was the day. The Time Lords return. For Gallifrey. For Gallifrey. For victory! Granted, I'm probably not Kalian, so I don't matter to Gallifrey's history as much. Um, so, yeah, there's that. There is that. That's what I'm hoping for. And Sutek is just sort of left in the vortex again. So the question, someone brought it up like, hey, he's been in the, he's been in the time vortex so long on the TARDIS. Because let's say the Doctor is close to... Well, the Doctor lies about his age, but let's... Let's say 500. Let's just give that ballpark number, because it doesn't matter. Alright? We're just going to go with that one, because we know the 11th Doctor, at one point, says he's 1103. And the 12th Doctor says he's over 2,000 years old. And if we just go by that one, it's been 1,500 years, at least that Sutek has been traveling in the Vortex on the TARDIS, so probably is not going to kill him. Uh, the dog's like, you win, Sutek. I'll kill him. I'm like, you've been killing before, dude. This isn't anything new. I mean, especially with what you know about the Daleks, you know, you, you've killed them. Cybermen, yeah, it's it, this isn't anything new to you, man. Um, I think this is sort of where we sort of misunderstand the Doctor's morality, but whatever, whatever. So, the big mystery about Ruby's mom is nothing. Nothing. The whole secret of Ruby is nothing. It's kind of it. Ruby was left by a 15-year-old girl because her stepfather was terrible. She didn't want a child to be in that environment. Also, she was 15. 
so she left Ruby there. This point that everyone was like surprised about is turns out she was pointing out the sign that said Ruby Road. It's like the child's name is Ruby. And I thought, who points like this? Instead of just saying, hey, her name's Ruby. All right, and go from there. Like what? Also, who wears a cloak like she's about to go to the Jedi Temple to execute Order 66 and kill some kids? I'm like, I don't quite get that either. Um, also, what's the name of the snow? Why is it so significant that snow appears every time we discuss, every time Ruby's about to die? It starts snowing. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Now, maybe Russell's going to explain it later, but it already has been revealed that Ruby's going to play a smaller role in the next season, so I don't know. I don't know. There's also interesting things about the role Mrs. Flood will play later. Um, she definitely isn't Susan, although it'd be interesting if after this episode it turns out Susan's going to be a bad guy. Because, like, so, Doctor, Grandfather, all of these other people you've seen throughout all your lives, you never went looking for me. No checked on me. Well, you know what? You know what? This is valid. This is valid. Burn him down. Burn him down. Even more like at the end of this episode, like before Ruby ruins it all by saying I love you to the doctor, um, she's like, you know, you, you had a granddaughter. You don't look at her like, oh, I might look her up. Like, what do you mean you might? You've been an emotional wreck this whole time, wondering about whether or not you had the resolve to face your granddaughter. And then it turns out it's not her, and you felt terrible that it wasn't her because you really wanted to see your granddaughter. So, um, there's no might. Go look for her. Russell, get Caroline Ford. Do it. You don't... Oh, God. This is why it's important to me that Caroline Ford show up and talk to you, all right? So, recently, William Russell, played the first Doctor's companion, passed away, all right? Ripe old age, in his 90s, you know, totally fine. And he did show up in Power of the Doctor. It was a great moment to see him there. I loved it. Helped me get through Power of the Doctor, which, whatever, we're not going to go into that. But we only have so much time left with all these actors who were there during the classic era. All right, and I'm not saying they have to be like major characters, but you know, have them be in an episode or something. Like, you know, even if it's like a walk on role. All right, have Fraser Hines be in the Highlands. All right. <laughs> and just like, hey, have him wave off the doctor. You know, just like, hi there. And just go there. That's all people really want at the end of the day. Now, Ideally, we want Fraser Hines to reprise the role of Jamie McCrimmon in a story and just go from there. That's 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 the pipe dream. Probably won't happen. But we do like to see them all get that one more moment on screen. And the, just, just do it. Just do it, all right? I mean, make it interesting like when, like in School Reunion, all right? Liz Slayton came in to reprise the role of Sarah Jane. All right, led to the Sarah Jane Chronicles, or well, Sarah Jane Adventures. Yeah, I'm not acting like I watched that, but still, um, there's not a lot of like outside main Doctor Who continuity I consume, um, except Gallifrey. As I said, proud Gallifrey and patriot. Gallifrey stands. Um, I wonder what those vampire stories are about, though. But um. Yeah, in terms of finales, I would say this one ranks pretty low in terms of the story because it feels like it's just one part of a bigger piece. And for this story just to sort of end, like ignoring what the Christmas special may or may not do, um, it seems kind of weak to just to say like, oh, Ruby, Ruby's mother was only important because we thought she was important because I thought she was pointing at me. So Sutek thought that too? Like... I don't quite get that. Um, some people say it would be better if she was pointing at Sutek, and Sutek was surprised that she could see her. Um, that could imply something else. Maybe something else retroactively. Maybe this entire story is going to be seen like, hey, in reality, something else was going on that night. I don't know. Overall, uh, as a whole, I will grant The Legend of Ruby Sunday and The Empire of Death one TARDIS. All right. Nothing ever has gotten like another TARDIS here, but you know. Then again, this is like the second time we've done this, so you know, what do I know? Um, like, there's a lot of good here, but a lot of the bad sort of outweighs it in some ways. Like, a lot of this feels like Russell didn't have a way to properly beat Sutek. How do this back and forth? Because once you go with, oh, everything in the universe is dying. Um, it's not many more ideas we have here. But anyway, whatever. Bring Susan back. 
Anyway, um, points to the reunion with the Doctor, with, with Ruby and her mother. That was great. I think there was a problem where the Doctor like, you know, she has 18 years to look for you. And she still didn't. Uh, you know, uh, we use a time machine. It's not really fair. I'm like, what? So, wait, are you saying that we shouldn't? Or that she doesn't deserve it? Like, you don't know why she didn't. All right? It feels like you're trying to punish yourself because you've pretty much known where Susan was for a good while because you left her on Earth after the Dalek invasion of Earth. All right? So you've known where she's been for a good while. But whatever. Anyway. Anyway. With that in mind, let's bring this to a close. If you're new to the bug, thank you for free to like, comment, share, subscribe, smash that thumbs up button. I'll catch you all later. This is Bucket Thinking signing off. Thanks for watching. As always, may your phantom serve you well. And he does look like Scooby Doo, doesn't he?